So if you're watching this video or I popped up in your feed, that means you're probably thinking about getting into cybersecurity. So I'm going to give you the version no one else gives you. This is not, oh, take some certs and you're going to get a job and a roadmap type of video. I want to give you the idea of what it really looks like to work within cybersecurity. I want to give you an idea of what it feels like in the day to day, including the frustrations and how rewarding the field can actually be. People usually end up choosing cybersecurity for various reasons. In this day and age right now, a lot of people are just looking for stable careers that have really good income. They're thinking about, you know, hacking looks cool. <laughs> or if they're trying to figure out things on their laptop, they see a lot of videos like this, or they're just naturally curious people. All three of those are fine. But the ones who genuinely make it and who genuinely end up really liking working in this field are curious people. Like when you were a kid and you always did puzzles or you're always trying to solve that math problem that you just got wrong on your test, but it pisses you off that you got it wrong. If you're the type of person that goes online and something pops up on your computer and you're like, wait, what is that? Why did that happen? Then you're already ahead of the game. The curiosity will help carry you throughout your career. Now I'll tell you what it actually looks like to be involved in cybersecurity day to day, not the Reddit version, not the TikTok version, not the Instagram version. So cybersecurity is not glamorous. It's not like when you watch those scenes where the guy in the hoodie is like clacking, you know, or whatever you watch. Really, it's a lot of Googling. It's a lot of research. It's a lot of asking questions. It's a lot of looking up things that they have no answer to because you might be trying to discover something that has a zero day. So there is no answer. <laughs> something that got exploited and there hasn't been an explanation to because on the other side of cybersecurity are hackers that are always trying to invent new ways to exploit vulnerabilities that they find. You will constantly run into errors and not understand why they happened. You'll be trying to fix something and end up breaking something else instead. And now you have two problems instead of one. And then suddenly after hours and hours and hours of your eyes getting tired and you feeling drained, you're still not going to have an answer. The rewarding part is the second you figure it out, it's so rewarding. The dopamine hit that people get when they figure it out, unmatched. That's what keeps people in cybersecurity because that moment becomes addictive. You are constantly chasing for answers. You are constantly trying to prevent problems from happening. You don't fall in love with cybersecurity because it's easy. You fall in love with cybersecurity because it's challenging and it's rewarding and you can get paid to do what you love to do. Now you do need a mindset to be successful in this field. The first one is patience. You're not going to get the answers by going online and asking someone on Reddit or Discord how to solve a problem because either they don't know or they're not going to answer you. And that's okay. The people that succeed the most are not the people that learn the fastest. They learned to crawl before they walked. The most successful people in this field will tell you that this is a lifelong journey. And for lifelong learners like myself, my sister, a lot of people I know, that's great. We constantly love to learn new things and it challenges us. It challenges our minds so it never gets boring. So if you're the type of person that likes true crime, you know, like me, if you like to watch, you know, a lot of those who done it and read those fantasy books where you're trying to figure out who the killer is at the end, cybersecurity might be for you. You can go beyond cyber sleuthing and you could actually make it a career. The next part that is a big, huge thing in this industry that most people do not have that will put you above everyone else is having humility. Humility is the essence of cybersecurity because you're going to get humbled every day. You are going to run into times where you cannot stop an exploit, where you didn't catch the vulnerability before the bad guy did or the attacker did. You know, you run into a lot of people that have what they call in the industry ego problems. They have a god-like syndrome where they think that they are smarter than everyone else and they can figure everything else out let them. Those are the people that stay where they are. Those are the people that are still in the basement, you know, that you see um, in the movies where the hackers that have no job are trying to hack. It's because they have no job, because they're not humble. They're still living in a basement. Being in cybersecurity is not about being the smartest person in the room. It is not about being the smartest person in your server or arguing with people online or trolling people that you think that you're smarter than. 
It's about the person that keeps digging, the person that takes the time to figure out why something happened, how something happened, and learn how to create tools to prevent it from happening or be the best at using tools that already exist to prevent bad guys from, I don't know, scamming your grandma out of her retirement fund. Now that we've gone through humility, we're gonna talk about what is the most frustrating part, which is why you have to be humble. Everyone wants to jump straight into using the hacking tools. They wanna to get into malware labs, they wanna reverse engineer, they wanna do all the stuff that they think is fun. But here's the problem. If you go jumping straight to the advanced stuff, you're not going to succeed. Everything is going to feel 10 times harder. You're not gonna understand the language. You're going to look at syntax you don't understand. You're going to constantly get errors that you're not going to be able to differentiate between what happened and if it's something that you caused or if there's something wrong with the tool or maybe you're trying to use the wrong tool for the wrong thing. Having a foundation is everything. You can't build a house on quicksand. Some of the most important things that you'll need to know first that are not the most glamorous is networking, Linux scripting, and basically the concepts of cybersecurity, like the CIA triangle. There's a lot of note taking, a lot of memorization. And then once you get those things down and you have the knowledge and the understanding of all of the tools and the basic concepts of cybersecurity, then you can build on top of that. If you skip the fundamentals, you're going to end up hurting yourself. It is going to get frustrating. You are going to feel defeated and you are not going to succeed. You're constantly going to be running up against problems that you cannot figure out and you're going to feel like all of this is too hard and most people end up giving up. I'm saying just understand what you want to do within the world of cybersecurity and focus on that. So now, again, I told you I'm not going to start this by telling you what cert to get into so that you can get a job, but I am going to give you an outline to help you so that you don't get frustrated and you can remain humble and not have cybersecurity humble you. Don't do what I did. So I actually took some courses and it was more bootcamp style. And I did have some basic knowledge and a slight foundation that was okay enough for me to understand the concepts of cybersecurity. And what people would learn in about a two year course, they were trying to fit into basically a one semester. I was in class over 40 hours a week learning these concepts. The problem with that is, is it's hard for a lot of those things to stick. So I find myself going back and taking refreshers constantly. A lot of people that are trying to get into cybersecurity already have jobs or they're already in school for computer science. So taking on this extra learning path is hard. So you want to start slow. You want to take bite-sized pieces. You want to study what you are able to actually comfortably ingest and remember. So what this will look like, I would say give yourself one to two years. Hear me out. That sounds like a lot. One to two years is going to pass anyway. If you're broke now or you're struggling and hate your job now, you're still going to be doing that in one to two years. So you may as well use that time productively to set yourself up to get ahead. The job market right now, most people are not finding jobs that are new in tech within six months to a year anyway. So you might as well level up so that when that opportunity comes, then you're available. Luck is preparation meets opportunity. It's not a cybersecurity job just falling in your lap. So we're gonna break it down by months. The first 90 days or one to three months, what you're gonna do is you are going to study those basics that I was talking about. You're gonna look at networking. You're gonna learn how to use your terminal. You're going to get really good at Linux scripting. You're gonna get confused a lot and that's okay. You're gonna take a lot of notes. Then when you hit month three to six month mark, that's when things start to click. It starts to come together. You're starting to understand the languages. You can look at code and see syntax. You can recognize when something is out of place or what may have gone wrong. So what you're going to do is you're gonna take that information and you're going to start advancing it. This is when you start building on those foundational blocks that you made for yourself. Once you've gotten past the first 90 days, you're gonna hit that three to six month mark. So once you've gone through the basic foundations and you understand the concepts of how things work, you may have taken a network plus class, or you may have looked at a lot of things. I wouldn't say rush and take the you know exam, but I would say go ahead and then elevate 
what you've already built on. So now instead of just understanding how to use your terminal and what Linux looks like, you're actually going to start building scripts yourself. You're actually going to start breaking tools down. You're actually going to start to understand how these components work together within networking. Once you're at that six month mark, this is where it really gets deep. This is where you want to make your own home lab. This is actually really fun. I've made two of my own. You're going to complete labs. You're going to do CTFs, which are capture the flags, which you'll understand as we go along. You're going to start building small scripts of your own, and you're going to take all of those components and tools. You're going to start building a portfolio. Trust me here. Once you get past that you start building your portfolio on github or build your own website you start creating your own tools from everything that you've previously learned that's when you get into specializing you start to figure out where in cybersecurity you want to go do you want to be a SOC analyst some people like it do you want to get into pen testing do you want to get into forensic for all my cyber sleuths out there um, but beware it can be really taxing mentally also do you want to get into cloud structure which is huge in the industry and you could really bank on that one Whatever it is that interests you, I do say find something that supports your lifestyle. You don't want to be on call 24-7. Don't get a job where you are solely responsible for every time an emergency pops up. If you want to get into forensics, make sure that you're able to handle what you actually find online because some of it can be very traumatic. You have to make sure that whatever specialization you want to go into fits with what you believe in if you want to stop bad guys if you want to do ethical hacking so you would rather help people prevent issues from happening with their business that's more pen testing you can go blue team red team work your way up to purple teaming which is both there's a lot of different avenues which is the great thing about cybersecurity. now i'm going to prepare you for the next step this will take you through your entire career. This is after you started looking for a job, you have your portfolio, you're trying to network with people when things aren't clicking. This is the emotional part of cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is one of the easiest fields to experience burnout. Now, this is coming from someone that used to be a professional chef, so I know what burnout looks like, and I make sure that I do not allow that to happen within my learning experience or work experience right now. What that looks like is you feeling like you started to too late because there's 13 year olds doing more than I am or what you see online someone else is making a hundred thousand dollars doing this job one remember you are not everyone else Two, remember everything you see online isn't real three remember that 13 year old has parents that pay for you know their living situation and all they probably know how to do is build one to two things don't compare yourself to other people the biggest thing you're going to have to get over is understanding that you are at where you're at but you can also grow to get to where you want to be you might not think you're smart enough to do something or, you know, grow into another position, or maybe it's too hard based on everything else that you learned, or you don't want to keep going and spend the extra money on certifications or learning. There's always free paths. Stay offline where areas are not safe. If you don't like the way people troll online, you might not have the skin for this game because there's always going to be people that think they're better than you. They're always going to try you. If they know you're in cybersecurity, automatically you make yourself a target. You have to make sure all your systems are secure because if you piss one person off online, they're going to try to hack you. Things like that that no one tells you about that happen in this industry very often. And that's not to scare you. That is to prepare you. Just make sure all of your things are secured. That's one of the first things you learn how to do so that you can help others secure their self. It's not a reason to be scared or deter you from this field. It's just something to be aware of. People are going to call you stupid. People are going to say you don't know what you're doing. People are going to question you. They call it flashcarding. You don't owe anyone an answer unless they're paying you. Understanding that all of this is normal will help you get through the storm, I promise. What you'll start to realize is you're confused but you can learn on the other side. So whatever you're confused about, there's always an answer. Whether it's been published or not, you might be the first one to publish it. Document everything that you do. Save those notes. It can save you in the long run. So once you get past your woe is me moment and this is too hard or whatever, now we can get into the cool stuff. So remember when I told you that you have to kind of figure out what you want to specialize in? I'll give you some ideas. Pen testing is where you get permission that you can actually hack systems, which is really cool for some people. 
Sarho's favorite. Then you have a stock analyst. This is one of the easier jobs to get into so that you can grow and you can really learn on the back end what you are looking for. You go over IDS or IPS, and that's intrusion detection systems or preventative systems, things like that, so that you can help businesses, companies, medical facilities, military, banks, things that are really crucial protect the information. So you are actually acting as someone that protects the mass majority of people out here who do not have your experience once you learn these things. Incident responses, digital forensics, for you cyber sleuths, that's what I was interested in. <laughs> like I said, red teaming. So if you YouTube red teaming, you'll probably see all these cool videos of people doing like physical pen testing and all the stuff like that, along with the pen testing. But basically you are the team, again, with permission, that gets paid to see if you can successfully hack into systems, whether that be physical or online um, via their systems. And the reason for that is, is that companies will pay people to make sure that their team, which is the blue team, that is keeping everything safe, actually isn't missing anything. You guys actually work together in tandem, but it is a really cool job. Hard to get into. Threat intel, malware analysis, AI security, cloud security, app security, DevSecOps. There's so many different options. And if you're not a super technical person, you can go into governance or PM work or management. There's so many avenues depending on what you enjoy doing and what you see your day-to-day -day looking like. So there's a job in cybersecurity literally for every personality type. You just have to look. You have to see, are you a creative? Are you a deep thinker? Are you a problem solver? Don't lock yourself into just one thing. Be open-minded and see where it takes you. You're stepping into a field that is never going to stop growing and has endless possibilities. And that's why it's worth it. Cybersecurity is one of the most rewarding fields because unless you're like in the military protecting the country, which another topic, you are protecting people daily. You have to remember that when you hit those small wins, treat yourself, think of them as rewards. It's elevating you. When you have that script that automated something you were struggling with for years, now your tool runs it perfectly on its own, that's a win. That's no small feat. When you are stopping a vulnerability or you discovered it before hackers did, that's a win. When you find an exploit that you can stop in its tracks or you see a threat that started to happen and you stop it before it escalates or moves laterally, that's a win. There's so many ways to reward yourself in this field past money. But once you start hitting those rewards, the money does follow. Remember, you're protecting people, systems, the government, children. You're building skills to stay relevant in the industry. So choosing this field actually matters. You have to be a curious person and you have to want to do good. And honestly, you're joining a field that no one really ever grows out of. I have met online people that are in their 50s, 60s, pushing 70, that are still working at a senior level management because they do not want to give it up. This is a very fulfilling and rewarding field to know that what you do every single day actually matters. So if you are thinking about getting into cybersecurity, start. Stop second guessing. Don't worry about what other people are doing, where they're at, how hard it is, or what you think you can or can't do. It's not about being perfect. Don't compare yourself to anyone else. Your journey is your journey. You get to create the right path. Once you start learning, just keep going. Start exploring, start challenging yourself, start experimenting. And remember, be patient with yourself. Be kind to yourself. Give yourself grace and understanding the same way you do to others. And the main thing, be consistent. That is what's going to separate you from everyone else that gave up along the journey. If you stick with this, I promise it'll be worth it. Not only the pay, but in ways you cannot even imagine. If you made it this far, thank you for sticking around. This is my very first long form video and I do appreciate it. For more information like this and to get deeper into information like this, to really learn the how to's, how did I learn? How did I land a job within a couple of months after finishing my boot camp. Stay tuned. I will help you guys along the way. I will hold your hand, I promise. <laughs>
If you want more information, like, comment, and subscribe. I don't like the way I ended that, but he threw me off so much.